Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and let's extend our Slida slideshow script in this video. I have some grand plans. So here is a slide deck file. Uh, and it looks like this. First slide, slide in. Two different lines, then color, then we have Another slide with different colors and different fonts. It's it's nothing new here really. Uh, and then I read um, content from a file here, block one, uh, which is located here actually. So this is displayed in the center. Um, next slide, just a normal slide. Then another uh, file with normal text and last uh, the ASCII art here with a lolcat effect. Um, and all of this is fine, but imagine having like a real uh, deck uh, for a real presentation. You, you probably would have um, at least uh, 30 slides or something, you know, sometimes more, sometimes 50, sometimes 100. And this format uh, is not that friendly really to maintain. And especially this, if you want to have uh, slides that look something like this. Uh, containing normal text you have to create a bunch of small uh, files and store them somewhere and things like that so i would like the syntax for this slide deck uh, to to um, to be a little bit more um, expressive or liberal or whatever so here is an alternative to the same slide deck here you can also do this so here i have this file open this is uh, the alternative that I want to be able to use uh, after this video is done. It, it does the same thing. First slide up here and then second slide here. Then we set uh, options on its own line here. It uh, should be um, permitted with this syntax. Then the next slide. And then option string. Lots of comments. And then a text block, instead of imp importing uh, normal text from a file, we, sh we should be able to, to write them directly in the slide like this. Uh, declared inside uh, lines consisting of three backticks like this. Uh, and I think we should also make it so that we can uh, prefix uh, the start of such a block with an option string if we would like to do that. So that's what I want to do here uh, in this video. But as, if you look at these two, they are the same thing really in just different formats. So I think it's easier and better if we, instead of extending our parser part here of the script, uh, we create a preprocessor uh, that will format a slide deck looking like this into a format like this. And then we just pa pass that format uh, to our parser. So let's do that. Let's copy this alternative slide deck, paste it into our current slide deck, save here. And now it also updates here. Uh, and then I think we do this. We can create a variable called deck, which will be equal, equal to the output of a function that we can call format deck, which takes a single argument, which should be the deck file. So let's create that function format deck. Local file is equal to dollar one. Then we can just do echo from format funka. Uh, and then let's do this echo deck. Then we exit the script here because we will now focus on uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, preprocessor format deck function and we don't care about uh, the slide part uh, for a while here now. If I execute the script now, 
all it says is from format funka because that's the content of the variable deck which is echoed here right um, the tool i want to use to uh, reformat this uh, file is of course awk because why not so awk and we use file as the input for awk here and we could start by just printing every single line in the file so now we get yeah, it prints the content of the file nice um, yeah one thing we we can do here to make this presentation a little bit easier uh, for me now is to not allowing uh, this syntax for now uh, prefixing the code blocks with uh, uh, an option string so let's just comment that out and add three backticks here and we can also comment this guy out and then i think we should start with uh, these uh, text blocks so can we make uh, our awk script here only print lines inside uh, text blocks uh, we know when a text block starts and ends uh, because they are in enclosed in uh, these three backtick lines like this so if we uh, create a variable that we can toggle when we encounter uh, three backticks so let's say that variable is false from the beginning uh, it's false, it's false, it's false, it finds, uh, finds three backticks, we toggle it to true, and if that variable is true, then we print the content, find backticks again, we toggle the, the variable, so it's no, now false, set it to true, print, set it to false, and so on. Uh, and one interesting thing with awk is that all variables uh, have initial values uh, and and those values are false zero and blank string depending on uh, what you use the variable for so if you use uh, an unset variable uh, for arithmetic uh, math uh, equations then it's zero but if you use it as a boolean as a test is this true then it's set to false initially and that means uh, we can do this. So let's call this uh, variable in a block. And if in, in a block is true, then we print the current line. So now if we execute this, it will print nothing because in a block is a var uh, variable that uh, contains the value false. And that's why this uh, action is never printed here because this is always false but we toggle this when we encounter three backticks a line consisting of three backticks so we make a pattern here um, three backticks dollar slash if we find this uh, a line matching this pattern then we toggle uh, the state of the variable in a block so we set in a block is equal to the opposite of in a block not in a block and that means it's false when we start the script but when we find the first uh, three backticks it will set in a block which is false it will set it to not false meaning true and the next backticks it will set it from true to not true, meaning false. And this will result in this. Here you can see, now it prints uh, only the lines in the blocks, but it also prints uh, the last uh, backticks, the closing backticks. Um, and that is because uh, in a block is true, you know. Uh, here it's set to true, then it prints this, it tests here, is it true? Yes, print that, is it true? Print that, is it true? Yes, print that. And then it also does this and toggle the state of it. So 
we can also test if the line is not matching this pattern and now it shouldn't uh, print those trailing uh, cripple backticks okay so we have isolated the text inside uh, text blocks and we want to convert this into this format and what that really means is that I want to redirect the content of the text blocks into temporary files and uh, print a line with a left pointing angle bracket and the path to uh, this new temporary file. Um, and it's of course important that each text block uh, points to a different file which should have a unique name and the name needs to be unique inside this awk uh, loop here. One easy way to, to make sure that we create unique files is to uh, create a temporary directory before we, we do anything here. Let's do that. Let's create a global variable called tempdeed which can be equal to uh, tmp slider and then I want to do this really quickly here um, I want to create that directory if it doesn't exist and I want to if it exists and contains files I want to remove those files before we enter the format uh, dec function here Here we will see an interesting um, thing from uh, Shellcheck that this is not the smartest thing you can do uh, rm variable slash star because what if you uh, have a typo in the variable name here then this will be empty you know and that means rm slash star and that is very bad sometimes so to avoid that you can use colon question mark and that will exit the script if this uh, variable uh, is not set uh, so it will never do this rm action all right um, but if we want to redirect the content of these text blocks uh, into this temporary directory in uh, separate files we need to know the path to this directory inside uh, our awk script here. It's a good idea to pass that uh, path as a variable like this. So dash v will create a variable available for us inside awk. That variable is named tmpd uh, and the content is uh, yeah, this variable. But then we also want to um, to create unique file names for each text block. So every time we encounter a new text block, meaning every time we set in a block to true, we should generate a new unique file name. And now we can do this. Can we make a test out of this? I don't know, this is a bit weird, but it's kind of cool. So if in a block equals, this is not a comparison. It doesn't compare these two. If, if this is equal to that, it never will be, you know. What we actually do here is assigning in a block to the opposite of in a block. And that will be either true or false. And that's a valid, uh, if test here so this if will be uh, pass whenever we enter a block uh, and when we do we want to create uh, a new file name so we can do tmp file is equal to tmp dir slash and then the individual uh, the unique file name here it's not important and at all and we don't have to be fancy here so um, I'm thinking let's just create a variable that we call ntmp and remember I told you that all variables in awk have uh, three initial values really it's uh, false 
zero and blank string depending on what you will use it for and here we will use it as a number and increment that number by one uh, and to illustrate what's going on here instead of printing the lines when we are in a block we can print the file name the tmp file here now you can see the first two lines will get uh, we want to redirect to this file tmp slider 0 and the other ones will be redirected to slider 1 because we increment uh, the value of ntmp here every time we enter a new block so if we would have three blocks yeah, we could even create three blocks here here is another blocks now we have three blocks and the first starts with zero if we wanted to have these started uh, indexed uh, at one for some reason we could do this and that will yield this result uh, don't want to go too much into this uh, whatever you can meditate on it <laughs> okay but now we are just printing the file name what we really want to do is print uh, the current line and append that to this uh, file like this and notice here also that I have this uh, TMP slider here in the sidebar. Now it created three files here. It redirected those lines into those files. And it, uh, our awk script here doesn't print anything to standard out. So that's why we only get a blank string here from the echo, echo deck. It just echoes uh, a blank line. Um, Okay, so that's kind of the hardest part here. Uh, but we also want to uh, print the whole slide deck file here. Uh, and it's easy now, uh, when we don't have our uh, blocks here, we can just test if, if not in a block, print. That will print the whole file here, but without the blocks, as you can see. But we still get, uh, yeah, we get the opening uh, uh, backticks, the first backticks of each block. Uh, we don't want that, and we also don't want to print blank lines, and we don't want to print uh, comments lines starting with a, a sharp. So let's extend this test a little bit here. Um, if we add lines that have lines whose first character doesn't start uh, with a sharp. Now we get this output. See it removed quite a lot of things here. Uh, now we just want to get rid of these uh, three backticks here. And that's easy we can just add or not here and uh, uh, um, yeah it's this guy there uh, but now we don't have the uh, block lines at all we actually wanted to print those um, in, in this fashion, you know, but I instead of, of, yeah, we will print the, the path to our uh, temporary files here. Um, and that is something we can do here, you know, every time we encounter a, a line with three backticks, if we set it to true, if we set in a block to true, we set also the temp file, uh, the file name. Uh, but we could add else here, and that will be the closing uh, backtick line. And here we could um, uh, actually set change uh, 
the current line. We can do this to TMP file. Then I think we need to move this one here. Because then dollar zero is what will be uh, matched against this pattern. And it will be, uh, uh, we, we will um, change it here from three backticks into this. That will result in this. Now we can see, uh, 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 and you know, this um, deck almost works now with our parser. Only thing we need to do is uh, modify this stuff here, uh, where we have just a single option group on a line. We want to concatenate that with the uh, line, with the next uh, uh, line. That's quite easy. We can make a test here to, to capture uh, lines that only contains an option group. So it start with two at symbols, then any character, and then two at symbols. Could even do this, I guess it's even better. So any character that is not an at symbol, one or more of those. Uh, and then we also have white space, optional white space, so a star. But in awk, uh, have uh, more extended regular expressions, so we can actually write backslash lowercase s is the same as that uh, space uh, character class. So if this is the content of a line, which will match, for example, this line here, then we can add that line into a variable that we can call last line is equal to dollar zero, the current line. Uh, and then we also add this pattern here. But a negated version of it, so it will not print lines uh, like this to standard out. Instead, it will print last line dollar zero, and then set last line to an empty string. Now it will concatenate those lines. Uh, and now it works fine in this case here, and that's because uh, in our slide deck this line actually ends with a, 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 a white space here, and that is uh, copied uh, when we concatenate this. But if a line doesn't end with any white space like this, and I think that should also be valid, it's uh, very easy to miss those otherwise. But now we will not get a good uh, output here. We, we actually want the white space uh, in between here for, um, that's a rule we added to the parser, maybe unnecessary rule, rule but whatever, uh, this needs at least one white space. Um, but we could easily fix that by just adding a, a white space after this line here. And now we get good output, I believe. Yes, here. And the thing is, it will still work even if even even if we had uh, like lots of white space here. That doesn't matter. Uh, our parser will um, put all the white spaces into the same group here, one white space or more. Uh, so this is fine. We could actually test this now. Uh, instead of echoing deck here, and instead of generating the slides array from the deck file, we do it from our formatted deck variable here. First slide, second slide, here. And, and remember, this is the actual file we are passing out to our script. Then this with colors. Here, it works, the, the, reads this uh, file here. The next file, 
then a normal slide, and then a new file, and then the Arch logo. Uh, so let's now just add these um, things that I commented out. Uh, the ability to add option strings, prefix the, the first backticks uh, with uh, an option string or option group, and also add it here and see if, we, if, if that works. I think this one, the first one here, that will work uh, immediately. I think we should also do this, this again. Exit. Yes, here, this option here, C1, that is here, and that is a prefix, so we didn't do, have to do anything to make this work. Uh, but now, this line is interpreted as a slide line. It doesn't match uh, any of these uh, uh, patterns we have here, so it just prints it normally. Uh, and we really really don't want that. <coughs> and now you can see it also broke here. Uh, it doesn't understand that this is now a text block and stuff. So you have to extend uh, this pattern here to um, include an optional uh, option group uh, followed by one or more white space and question mark so zero or more one uh, occurrence of, of this pattern can be before the three backticks. Now it works, uh, but uh, now this uh, option group uh, or the options are just discarded. Uh, they are not printed here together with a, they should be prefixed here to this line. Uh, and uh, I think the best thing is to, to do um, like here, we add the option string as uh, last line here. But we only do that if... Um, if we have this pattern. We can actually remove the parentheses, we don't need them here. So if the string starts with an option group, uh, then last line is equal to uh, the line actually this line minus the backticks so we could write gen sub uh, replace or substitute three backticks with nothing do that one time in the current line that will be the content of last line, meaning the whole line, minus the backticks, meaning the option string. And then last line will have a value here eventually when it uh, 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 prints yeah, the whole thing. I think this works. Yes, perfect. And there we more or less have it. Um, there's one last thing I would like to do. I don't want to create this uh, temporary directory like this. I just did that to illustrate uh, or so we could easily monitor the files here. I think it's better uh, to set tempdir to make temp-d instead. And then we don't need to do this. So this will create a temporary directory uh, with a unique uh, name and uh, this variable will contain the name uh, the path to that directory. Now we can use this uh, death trap that I had set up here, uh, or it's an exit trap. So when this script receives the exit signal, uh, meaning every time the script uh, closes, no matter how it does that, it will trigger this function death. And here we can remove that uh, directory. rm rf we at least need to use r here but I, I use f as well 
and then whoops temp dir colon question mark there so if we save there um but let's keep on printing the output here see how it looks now now you can see we get this uh, kind of weird uh, uh, locations for the temporary files but that's just good we know that we create them in a, in a new directory uh, we don't overwrite any files or anything and as soon as the script exits that directory is removed so here is my temp uh, directory but we cannot see that uh, directory because it's it removed it as soon as it uh, exited the script maybe we can see it really fast here if i execute the script you can see something happened here but it becomes even more clear if we run the script normally now you can see we have a directory here containing our three uh, files the text blocks uh, but as soon as I exit out of uh, less, it will also break the loop and it will uh, also end the script. And then the directory should get removed if everything is set up correctly. And it is, it works. You can also see here 24 milliseconds is what it takes to, to uh, format, format uh, the deck file and create the temporary file. So this is very fast, even if you would have hundreds of uh, files uh, i doubt, doubt that anyone would but maybe like 100 slides is not unheard of in a slideshow like this a presentation slideshow but i doubt it would take more than uh, 100 milliseconds even with a complicated 100 line or 100 slide uh, file i haven't really tested how it performs on, on larger uh, input but it's very fast to to do this and we didn't have to change a single line here in our parser. We did everything as a preprocessor here instead. And I think it's a, it's a good solution. It's a little bit uh, weird and lots of strange uh, regular expressions, but uh, learn to speak regular expression. It's, it's very rewarding. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, good enough here. I, I have more IDs. I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if we should end this series here and I take a, a, a may, uh, maybe make an extra sold video with some refactoring and then creating a GitHub release and a AUR release and whatnot. But I have some IDs now. I, I got them today that I kind of want to try out. So I'm not promising anything. There might be one more video, or maybe two, I don't know, or maybe not. But I see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye, bye.